As the race for the 2023 election hops up and gathers more momentum, the debate is shifting from what is the norm to the extraordinary conversation that surrounds the need for us to have a paradigm shift in the 2023 election from what used to be the old brigade to a new set of leadership that will change the narratives about Nigeria. How realistic is that? How feasible is that against the background that every now and then there is an adage that we quote that says experience is the best teacher. I'd like to welcome our panelists to this conversation. Reverend Phil Aroji is the other state chairperson of the youth wing of CAN and PFN. Reverend Phil, thank you for joining us. Good morning, thanks for having me here. Good morning, viewers. We also have with us in the studio another youth leader in the body of Christ, Reverend Festus Osegali. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good morning. Thank you. I'm privileged to be here today. Uh, Bishop Austin Igbasan, well, I'll be comfortable to call him a veteran when it comes to public affairs analysis on issues of national interest. Thank you, Bishop, for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me this morning. Good morning, viewers. Let me begin with uh, Reverend Phil Aroji to set the template for this discussion. We have always had this conversation around the need for us to have a new set of leadership come on board. And some believe that the 2023 election is the right template for us to achieve that. Uh, what are your thoughts along those lines? Is this feasible? Is this realistic? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, what is obvious to everyone is that, um, of course, it's the end of eight years for most of the um, office holders. Okay. So certainly a new set of persons are coming on board. But those new set, you have to check their record. Where are they coming from? Are they um, the ones that can manage the affairs of the nations effectively? Uh, do they have competence? Do they have the character? Do they have compassion? Um, what are their policy templates that can help to galvanize um, this nation and get us out of the woods? Um, Nigeria is at war, both politically, um, physically, and um, also um, economically. Okay. We're at war. Even nature is not fighting us. Flood is all over the place. So we need new set of people. We need set of people, people who have the capacity, people who have the character, not um, people who say it's my turn. So whether you have the capacity or the character, it says your turn. Not regional people that will go to a, a region and say, look, don't vote for Ibrahim, don't vote for Osama. It is um, we that can do it. So no, that's not what we want um, in Nigeria today. We want people, um, if we're talking about the presidency, we want the person that can unify Nigerians, that can take us out of the wood, that can take us from consumption to production, that can change the dynamics. And someone that will be proud of them, that can um, appear in the Committee of Nations when there is a United Nations General Assembly, someone that can stand firm there and be able to speak eloquently and know what he's saying and be able to represent Nigeria. A global player, not, not a local champion, not ethnic uh, bigot, not a um, religious bigot. We need people that are competent, who has character. And the body of Christ that I represent has already given us a template on what we should watch out for. Okay. But while we are watching out for this, mm -hmm. I must put a caveat that as Christians, we must allow, we must give allowance for natural and personal interests. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what can or PFN says, yeah. this is what you could go for. We must know that there will be personal interests, there will be natural interests, there will be ethnic, ethnic interests, there will be religious interests Interest. in the next coming election. But okay. by and large, it's not about me. It shouldn't be about um, Bishop Big Basim or Reverend Festus or Sonny Duke or ITV. It should be about the future, the okay, nation, the, the Nigeria of our dream. Okay. That's what we're looking uh, at. Uh, let, let me go to uh, Bishop Austin Igbasan. Bishop, uh, share your thoughts with me uh, along the lines of the quest for a paradigm shift in the 2023 elections against the background that we always say that experience is the best teacher. Um, leaving the old brigade behind and uh, electing new sets of leadership to drive the affairs of this country. How realistic is that? 
uh, it is it can be achieved if we all hands are on deck. And but as far as politics is concerned, there are positions that are position of experience. If you check American government, you see that there are people that have been in the Senate for over 45 years. Now, the reason is that, you know, in Nigeria, when we, when we vote for people in National Assembly, you, you see, like what is going to happen now, right now, almost 45% to 55% of the people in National Assembly, they are not coming. And that one hampers development. Because the act of legislature is not what you, when you, uh, 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 when you elect a new legislature, it's going to take him one and a half years to learn the rope. That's why you see some people who, who begin to blame. I say our senator did not stand up one day to even move in motion. They never knew that when, a, when somebody is appointed, you know Nigeria is a, is a country where there is no place to coach people who are going into some office where they will be properly trained on the act of legislation. You will not see some, that's why you see some of them sleeping in the National Assembly because number one, the man is going there as a learner. In the next, one of the things Jonathan wanted to do then was he called about 45 senators and said, I want you people to be high-ranking senators. People that when we have budget, I can call you and discuss with you. You already know the act of legislation and you are used to the system. You know how it runs so that we can be able to, this discussion of core fight we are having, there will not be issue like that. You will be training even those who are coming on board. But our own now 55 has gone. The experience, the impartation, they have everything gone back. We are going to start all over by having new brand of legislator who will not know their left from their right. Yeah. You, are, you see somebody coming to the House of Assembly for the first time and is appointed a speaker. How would that person be able to know the act of legislation? It's going to be a teddy bear in the hand of the sitting governor. And that's what the governors want. They want somebody who, who does not know left from his right. I tell you, when uh, uh, Chief Lucky Binendo was governor of this state, we have one of the speakers, after uh, Honorable Thomas Okosu, we have uh, Barrister Matthew Egbado. During his tenure, you see that the man, the man does not run to government house. He does not run to government house. You ask him, he makes the governor to come and meet him. He goes by what the rules of the game, because number one, he knows the act of legislation. He is not somebody that is coming to say, governor, give me one car. So even the governor respects him in his capacity. He also respected the governor. And within the period that he was speaker, we could see the difference. So, but the problem we have now that we are going to have 55% of people who are going to be learner in the National Assembly. They will sit down and collect money, sit your allowance, and be sleeping. Now that one makes the taxpayer money to be wasted. It's a painful thing, but we have found ourselves in that in that uh, it's a reality. Uh, yeah, it's a reality. But the act of legislation is different from being a governor. Yeah. Uh -huh. But legislators are people that are supposed to have an experience of the job, the oversight function. You see today that they are going for oversight. I'm going to oversight the work of NLPC. They are the one that put boss in hotel. They are the one that fuel up. They are the one that buy our ticket. Ah, what, what kind of oversight we are going to do there? Everything we saw there, we are going to do as if we never see anything. We go back with our uh, gather must go back home and the country return back to the same place. Now you ask yourself, all the corruption cases that we have seen, that people have been questioned, a professor was made to sit down, and he acted in Hollywood, at the end of the day, what happened to that money of NDDC? It has gone down the drain. Now I remember when somebody was pressing the neck of the professor. It's like the person never knew that it was a drama. So the person was pressing, thinking somebody was dying. The man gave him blow. This is a, this is a, this is a drama. Don't kill me. He said, only would there this thing. It was planned before. Now you are not aware you want to kill me. Take the man, give me back. That's the man that was fainting. Only one person make millions of money to faint. And at the end of the day, what happened to the prof? Is it behind the bar? Uh, the people that came to take over from the prof, what have they done after that time? So I think what we, we, if we don't start from the legislature, we can start from the executive. Because when you look at it, the power of the executive is it's so nice. much, much okay. that the executive today in Nigeria con con control the judiciary, they control the legislature, they also control the fourth estate of right. democracy, which is uh, press. Press today have been pressed, and they are depressed and oppressed. So uh, until we, we start looking for people who can genuinely, as uh, 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 Reverend Fee said, who will genuinely represent the people? Because I think we can start from the executive because executive is the almighty 
weight of, of uh, the democracy in Nigeria today. That's why you see all governor want to appoint a speaker who will be in the uh, House of Assembly. When you do something against a governor, the speaker is already removed. Right from the, the governor is in the U.S., he can remove the speaker from U.S. and they will appoint another speaker. We want to come out of that wood. We are a governor does not behave like an emperor. We are a governor does not remove sitting uh, kings that were enthroned. Uh, who we know that the king is also a, 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 a leader in his capacity, the grassroots leader to the people. Okay. You see, most governor today, they embarrass kings. Okay. They make the kings to say, I will remove you anytime. And you see, many of the kings today who are supposed to talk for their people, they saw that they will be removed because they saw an example well, in the let, north. Let me, let me pursue the uh, Bishop Boston Igbasa, uh, Festus. I, I like to get your take on this debate on the paradigm shift. Um, we know that power is not given. Power is taken. So if we are saying there's, got, there's a need for us to have a paradigm shift from the old guard to the new set of leadership, how realistic is that against the background that power is not given, power is taken? I think uh, my thoughts align with both of them. Um, the need for paradigm shift especially in Nigeria, for the crop of leadership we have had mm. is inevitable. Um, arising from the fact that uh, majority of them have done the things they have done in the old way, in the old style that things have been done. Mm. We have really not seen predominantly uh, changes in style of leadership. We just only see people come to rotate what has been done. Is it NNPC as it has been? Is it the strike of the university lecturers as it has been? You could just go on and on to name them. Is it the promises, the campaigns that when I voted into power, I will bring in this thrill, we work in the street of uh, those states, in Lagos, in Nigeria. They were just merely uh, political campaign statements that never manifested. For me, um, the need for a shift to the younger Nigerians or people who are more politically competent cannot be overemphasized. I share the thought that the time is now. We have never seen it this way. I have not been used to talk or comment on politi politics, but today I'm in. Uh, as I come into the studio to talk about politics today, behind I've been deeply involved. I've seen myself travel to Lagos, seen myself travel to Abuja. I've seen myself in the last few days travel to, in a do state, to the, um, to, to the central, to the north, all on political move that things must change. Mm. For example, for example, some few days ago, I watched, um, I watched a procession on, on, on television. Um, the one in Lagos, the one in Abuja, the one I don't want to call politi political parties. Yeah. That we have ne in, in a magnitude that we have never seen Before. outside campaigning. This is not campaign. Mm. This is not um, gathering in primary school in a field to campaign for power. We see people, we see advocacy, and that is where we come in. Yeah. I particularly share the thought and, uh, that this is the time and it's possible to have a paradigm shift from the way things used to be, like he said, not the one that um, it is my turn, I must come to rule, or the one that is saying that um, I have contested for a long time and the rest, or the religious uh, angle. Yeah. But that it is time that the youth of the nation and the people in Nigeria should know that leadership should change and we should engage in it. All right, uh, Reverend Phil, um, in, in line with this conversation of a paradigm shift, we have certain stakeholders who are very, very significant in achieving that process. We can talk about the political parties. We can talk about the regulator, talking about INEC. We can talk about the electorate themselves, who in a sense are really the king makers now because the process of nomination is over. Uh, the parties have given their best. They put their best forward for the electorate to decide. Then you have the security agencies. You also have the civil society, and the media. Let's talk about the political parties. The political parties Sorry, by... You haven't mentioned the church. Of course, the church. The church as well. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well <laughs> the, the church as well. Yeah. But I, I want us to talk about the political parties in terms of helping to fast-track 
this paradigm shift um in the primaries done so far in, in, in have you have you seen in any way or are you convinced by what the political parties did with the primaries to bring their best forth for this election in line with the talks along the lines of the paradigm shift conversation <clears throat> thank you very much um we'll take them party by party first they could bend the ruling party in the build up to the primaries of the APC, the body language of the president and the body language of the national chairman of the party was actually that the candidate should come from the north. In fact, the, um, the chairman of the party, a few weeks before the APC primary, specifically said that their consensus candidate is the standing president, Ahmed Lawa. It was just before then that. Um, uh, Senator Ahmed Bolatinubu went to a Badam, a town hall meeting, where he specifically said that he has made a lot of people. In fact, the governor of uh, Ubu State, he said, without him, that man, that's Abiyonu, that Abiyonu, will not be governor. And then that was where he made a famous statement, Emiloko, it is my tongue, which is uh, a bad no manner of things. So that's what they saw that he was ready for a fight. Of course, the national chairman and others of that party mellowed down and they went for the primaries. We were told that dollars exchange hands in that primaries. People were practically intimidated to, um, to vote for him. And I think that political parties should not take Nigerians for granted. When you want to go for a contest, put your best feet forward. Mm -hmm. You don't leave people like Amichi. You don't leave people like uh, Professor Yemil Sibanjo. You don't leave other very strong and competent, agile young persons, young men, in your party, and then you bring a man, though he has been there, he has helped a lot of people. He has paid he has, his dues. He has paid his dues. He has raised a lot of people. Mm. But for political expediency, you now present him to us. And then he went further to insult the sensitive, sensitivity of Christians, especially Northern Christians, to say that he couldn't find a competent person among them and he picked another Muslim to be his running mate. And I could say to him and to APC leadership that, listen, 20, 2003 is different from 2023. It's 30 years apart. The fact that MP Abiola attempted it and he almost won that election. Has anybody asked the question why he never ascended to the throne? I'm speaking as a Christian. Our God is not sleeping. So that is on one side. We come to PDP. PDP by convention, by zoning, had practically zoned that office to the south. The incumbent president having been from the north, even if it's not from their party for eight years, they wanted it to come from the south. They set up a 37-man committee chaired by the governor of uh, um, um, Benue State, Governor Tom. At the end of the day, they couldn't come up with a workable agreement. They're not okay, we throw it open. The crisis from that primaries, dollars exchange hand, during the primaries, the governor of Sokudu State stepped down and ask his uh, delegates to vote for article. The crisis from that primaries and subsequent selection of a running mate right. has not left PDP. It's still there. Mm. Governor Wiki and five other governors have said they are not going to be part of the campaign. Mm. It's still there. So that the, the political primary, the PDP, has also not put their best foot forward. Then we come to NMPP. NMPP is an emergency party formed by the former governor of um, Kano State, Kwakwaso. Of course, he formed the party, and then naturally he took over the leadership, and then he's the national chairman with our own brother, Bishop Isaac, Bishop Isaac Idausa, as, as a running mate. So oh, that's there. The Labour Party, which is another major force in this election, Peter Obi, up to May 2022, was not in Labour Party, was still up to May 30th. Mm. He was still in the PDP, aspiring. But when he saw the things happening in the PDP, he decided to leave and then join Labour Party. Now, people like Pat Tutomi was the forerunners for that office. But they looked at consensus. I feel, look, who will better sell us? Who is a candidate who can sell better as a party, as a Labour Party? They chose Peter Obi, and everybody is seeing the movement. But the constituency I represent, the church, has given us four things we should watch out for, for a candidate. So, for me, it's not going to be about blanket one party. Mm. No, no, no. We are going to look at the political parties and pick individuals from different political parties, different offices, and vote for them. If there is a party we can form tomorrow, 
to contest for the next election, local government election and council election that the state government has fixed for 19, for 2023 May. We will form that party before that election will get it, in respect of the name. They have told us to look for capacity. They have told us to look for character. Mm. They have told us to look for competence. And they have told us to look for policies. CCCP. Okay. That's the policy. That's what can the guideline can have given for this election. Okay. PFN also, on the other hand, is not looking the other way around. Mm. We are very much interested. Okay. Apart from the Peabody parties, the INEC, the police, and the, the other, the media, and the civil society, the church is very much interested in this election. The PFN, under the new leadership of uh, Bishop Francis Waluke, set up a body that is called DPG, mm. Directorate of Politics and Governance. Mm. And that body that was, wasn't in existence before? No, no, that body wasn't in, was in existence in that name. Okay. That body was in existence in another name called Social, Social Security Organization, SSO. Okay. SSO. Okay. So when he came into office last year, he set up DPG, appointed a pastor, uh, pastor Femi Emmanuel, who was deputy governor of the of your state okay yes and made him the director and then it was cascaded down to the state we have apostle friday Binosa, who is the state director of dpg okay but the i lead the youth wing of pfn and okay. so under the pfn youth wing we have to also have that structure okay directorate of politics and governance, governance. I, the wisdom of the leaders of pfn they said you have to take that leadership but you see you can't be everywhere, everywhere. you Absolutely. can't be everywhere so Absolutely. reverend festus here is the coordinator of DPG in the wing in Edo State. In Edo State. Okay. So I'm just there as the head okay. to just supervise what they are doing. Okay. Just like he said, he has gone around the state and gone around the country in the build up to this election. In the forthcoming election, Edo people will know, Nigerians will know, that we have Christians that have good character that will be in the feed. We are going to decide who should get them. We have the population, we have the number. Okay. Let me, the let church me. will decide. And then we are going to spotlight them. This person, this person, in this party, in this party. Mm. Nobody will bamboozle us. Right. Bamboo us. Right. You don't have the resources to even buy us. <laughs> okay. You don't have the resources to buy the church. So All these right. are the men that will be in the field while we work with them. All right. Let, let me come to uh, Bishop Igbasan. Because we're still talking uh, the, the, the quest for paradigm shift, looking at the roles of several stakeholders. Let's, let's talk about INEC preparedness to facilitate this paradigm shift if it would ever happen. I mean, the INEC chairman has been talking tough. One major innovation in this election is the um, bimodal you know, a facility for the capturing and voting. I heard at some point there are people who were resisting it, saying that, oh, well, maybe this is not the time to deploy it. But INEC has consistently said that this is an innovation that has come to stay. I've also heard former REC in Edo State Barrister Mike Igini saying that um, the innovations in the election, uh, electoral um, act, which of course INEC is using to drive its process, they have, they have come to stay, but the people must take ownership. So we have three things we're talking about. We're talking about INEC, we're talking about the electorate, we're talking about maybe the media too, in ensuring that this paradigm shift comes to reality. Let's get your take on this. Yes, uh, the, the paradigm shift is now, but I think the bulk of the work is on the electorate. But for INEC, we have to make the INEC to do the needful. Because don't forget that uh, the man that plays the pipe takes the tune. They, they take the tune. Now, INEC, if you remember in the state here, INEC came up that time and they said we cannot use our phone. I was one of those who went out against INEC and tell them, you don't buy phone for us. You don't have power to tell me not to use my phone on the if you remember you remember i next said nobody can snap nobody can capture nobody can whatever now but, but the voice of reason and the voice of the people that's why the electorate came in because don't forget that the appointment of the even the next chairman itself is against the law because from time immemorial if you check it you see that i next chairman has never come from where president come from that is the act that established INEC. But our president, in his own wisdom, broke the law. Because during Abdul Abdus Salam, we have a late justice, Efrem Makpata, that midwife the, the democracy that we have in 1999. After that one, we, we have Dr. Ebeb Gubadia, who was not from the same place with uh, uh, General Basanjo. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, we have Professor Morris, who is an equal man, to midwife the, the election that brought a uh, late Yaradwa into power. 
Now, yeah, they are built up on the election and said, what brought me to power was not right, and I want to make sure I sanitize from there. And it started by Justice uh, Ways uh, Committee mm -hmm. about, that gave all the uh, the card reader issue, the, the uh, transmission of election results, right. and all the rest of them. Now, in the wisdom of our own president, he stopped the transmission of the, ex uh, uh, the, the something in 2019, the transmission of ex uh, result because we will have been transmitting result of election as for 2019, but for the affair that they believe that maybe the masses will not vote for them. And he said, in his wisdom, after the National Assembly have deliberated for six months on the Electoral Act, the uh, president in his wisdom, that is more than almost uh, uh, how many numbers of head that made the National Assembly, said he will not sign it. He, he brought his head to power. At the end of the day, we are now signing now. So for us to rely on INEC alone, if we are going to rely on INEC, I can bet you that to manipulate the beaver is not a prayer request. There are ways it can be done. Now, we, you, if you remember, in 2015, all what we complained then, when the election was going on, even in the north, they were not taken care of. But Jagawa, there was a report from uh, Potakot, deploying some people to go there. Even when there were fact and figure about underage voting, uh, over voting, and the, for about seven states of the north, he never took any step. If you remember, uh, the Rubebe, the former minister of Niger Delta, revolt against that uh, result when it was being uh, mentioned. Yeah. Now, what do we do? What happened? The man who was highly correct in the cargo, who said this uh, a, a, a result does not emanate from my office, was born with his wife and children. Alive. And, alive. And today, there was no report about what happened to the man, who burnt the man, and uh, uh, they put Ghana must go in the front. What I'm trying to say is that for you to call INEC saints, as far as the matter is concerned, every electorate must be joking. Thank God for somebody like Barrister Mike Ugini. And in a country that is saying such a man needs to be elevated and put him up because he has done extremely well. Far beyond what you think a man who's supposed to be an, is an unbiased umpire. So such a man, we should be proud of him. He's not a man that after his retirement, we will bring such people back. But because we are a country that does not believe in following people who have sat our land and doing the beats of the people. Yeah. Today we have ended up seeing judiciary fixing our leaders for us. Is that democracy? No. When it is a judge that will tell you, after people have voted and they are inside the sun, it is the court that will declare who is the winner. We cannot begin to revolve around all this. And don't forget that even the politicians themselves, they have a way of buying judges to be able to... We, we all saw it here. All of us saw what happened when people, at, 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 sometimes discover the text messages that were sent to the head of court of appeal when they were removing governor in southwestern state. Who would ever believe that that thing was in existence yeah. with that jurist there, that, that, that power was changing hand behind her and they were removing sitting so, so governor. So what I'm saying yeah, yeah. is that the, the electorate must check me the INEC, INEC themselves, okay. and all the guidelines that have been put on ground. Don't forget that the same INEC always have fire outbreak on their card reader whenever election is around. Oh, those state fire outbreak before the uh, Kedulu election, and Abra has a fire outbreak. Have you asked yourself why is it that the fire has never caught security gateman house? It is always where the card readers are that will be born to ashes. And instantly, a sitting governor will make money available to assist INEC. This is a drama. Until the electorate, if we are going to say, because I'm telling you now that the appointment of the head of INEC is against the law of the land. You don't bring an INEC chairman. The, the reason why it was placed there is that so that it will be an unbiased umpire. We can make all the noise, but the people we are playing game with, how is it that we see INEC? Uh, Kadrida, um, what is it called? A uh, PVC being given in Emir Palace. How many of our other other beneath the Udesia I make a, a PVC in his office no. in his palace? No. no. Have you asked yourself how many churches today are sharing PVC? It is not on. So how do we arrive here? How do we arrive at this level we have found ourselves? So that is why I said, if you are going to say I make is Saint Gabriel, Saint Mary, they are going to do everything pure. The electorate 
as we stood our ground. If you remember in the North State here, even though if we are biting our finger now, many of us mobilized to put the government in place, and we put our phone that everybody is an island, we build a portal. I, I raised also ministers of God, I put them on the feed. They were reporting we shut that coastal boat, we put people in hotel to sleep where their former PVC is so that they can vote. Okay. But even though we are not enjoying the system, that is a topic for another day. But what I'm saying is that we stood our ground as the electorate, not the INEC. Okay. So if the if the electorate are docile and they are expecting magic from INEC, INEC has an interest. All right, let me let me push you there, Bishop. Let me push you there. Uh, Reverend Segali, uh, take it further uh, along the lines of uh, some of these critical stakeholders uh, looking at the security agents, the media, the civil society, and even the church uh, to ensure that this paradigm shift becomes a reality in a country like ours where somehow, sometimes, things unexpected just happen and you really can't even uh, fathom how those things come into reality quickly. Yes, um, let me just quickly add to the one of um, Bishop and um, Reverend Phil on INEC to say that um, um, at the exception of this new INEC leader, I didn't have confidence in him. Um, I didn't even believe that Yakubu can do the extent he has done. Okay. Uh, arising from the fact that he was from the north and the president as well was from the north, like he analyzed. But sincerely, for um, the public view and probably my opinion, he's done so well. Okay. Um, this is my own uh, personal judgment arising from the election in Ekit, I mean, um, Osho State, the one in um, oh, Ekiti, uh, Anabra, and then the primary elections where you see this man firm on who becomes um, what. Um, the Senate president a few days ago um, was just um, declared not to be the candidate, candidate for his party. Yeah. And uh, it's reflected. I see this again and again all over Nigeria. And then um, we have seen him come up on policies on this forthcoming 2023 election, holding on to his policies, holding on to when um, um, people should register, when um, registration should be over, when card will be collected, and some of this, they are coming up as planned. I okay. think he should be giving such uh, credit as a person, as a guest, I believe that because he's from the north, he may just be partial to that extent. And then going forward, I want to say that um, the, the media, the various media, whether it's TV, Silver Bear, and the likes, should engage aggressively um, this process. I watch on television, I watch your program, I watch programs from other stations, and if you are sensitive to know that everything has been politics, 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 and they have been very objective, giving credence to um, the um, differences in political party. I watch that. Uh, I've never seen uh, for the for the now uh, media houses supporting particular political party. As you will see in some state, this one want to be obedient. This one want to be um, uh, it's my turn and the like. But for the media houses, we have seen a uh, fair play, and I think this should be so sustained. The media should give coverage, equal coverage to every political party, and that should be what it should be. Why for the electorate, the people who should be on the field to um, vote and choose their leader? I want to advocate that um, we should, to, us, to a large extent, engage this process with every seriousness. Okay. The time of voting and going home to allow people just declare results should be over. If it's possible, everybody should stay behind to see election declare in the glaring eye of everyone. Like Bishop said, if it's possible, if folks are still allowed to monitor processes, we should record incidents, we okay. should record precedents, so that election will not just be uh, stolen after people have voted their choice. And then I'm advocating that the church where I represent currently, the Christian youths, irrespective of denomination, whether the Orthodox, whether Pentecostal, whether the White Garment Churches, the Aladora, we should come out on this election to throw weight behind what the parent body have requested, the CCP, so that credible people can come up to rule this nation. The days of saying politics is dirty, Christians should not be involved, which has actually given right 
free ride to people who are not credible to rule us should be over because Christians in Nigeria have a large number to make statements politically. All right, let's, let's just quickly conclude our conversation uh, before we take the next segment of the show. Um, Reverend Phil, uh, let, let, me, let me come to you uh, to distill all that we've discussed so far in terms of the paradigm shift, particularly looking at the role of the church, church leadership. We've always had this tradition where it's a case of where politics is for politicians. Um, uh, the church is for church leaders, pastors, reverends, and stuff like that. Or maybe religious leaders, um, religion is for them to handle. I I'd like to get your take on this. Are we getting enough bite in that direction to drive the body in that direction? The politicians are threatened that the church is speaking now. The spokesperson for, one of the spokespersons for APC, uh, Presidential Campaign Council, uh, Senior Advocates, Festus, um, uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Festus Kayamot, yes, came up the other day and said that uh, pastors and bishops should not, their responsibility is not to take people to Asoro, but to take people to heaven. I am saying today that it is not the responsibility of lawyers to take people to Asoro. Their, their responsibility is to go to court and defend people. That is for Festus Kayamo, not other lawyers. They are threatened, and we're not going to give it up. Because the policies that government come up with, whether we like it or not, affects us negatively. Mm. If you do analysis of what is happening with the flood, Cameroon, Cameroon and government are not wicked to us. The water they release every year, first we are notified to release, that they are going to release water. Again, they are told, we have been told, Nigerian government have been told over the years, to build our own water barriers, mm. but we never do that. Mm. So those negative policies are affecting everybody. everybody. Irrespective of yeah, religion whether you're a Christian or not, mm. it's affecting everybody. Mm. If power, if government is about power, about the person who chairs the distribution, the allocation and distribution of resources, our common wealth, we can't leave it for especially in the country where we have majority Christians, and those where we have majority Christians, you can't leave it for unbelievers to do. So we are very much interested and went to that. Um, talking about the paradigm shift, I think we really need to get away from the old law. Mm. All of the persons who are contesting today the presidential election have been there. Tinubu has been there for the past 24 years. He was even there in the days of Nadeku. He was a senator not in this republic. He was a senator in the Second Republic. Um, Atiku has been there. Atiku contested in 1992 against M.P. Abiola in the primaries. He's been there for 30 years. They've been there. Um, Kwan Kwasu has been there since 1999. He has held all the position. He's been senator, he's been governor twice, he's been minister for uh, um, defense. defense. So he's been there. Okay. The only person that has even had a very short term in governance is Peter Obiano. Somehow he's the youngest, just eight years has gone off uh, an ambrastic. So we have to look at all of this and look at how they'll be delivered. Okay. The church, for example, led to the in Edo State, led by Bishop uh, Oyeno de Kure, has given us the money to go out. Okay. Yes. Okay. The Let PFN, uh, yeah. finally, sir, yeah. the PFN wing of Khan, led by uh, our mother, Yemoya, Margaret Agbonifu, mm -hmm. has given us the go ahead to mobilize Christians okay. to play politics. Okay. So nobody else. Okay. Is, when, when you read Genesis chapter 11, verse 6, mm. the Bible says the people is one. You people who read English will say that is not correct. Mm. How can you say the people is one? But it is correct because that's what the Bible says. Spiritually is correct. Yes, that's what the Bible says. All right, Bishop, quickly, final yeah. take. Yeah. Yes. Well, my, own, my own take is that the church has woken up. And uh, no matter the noise of anybody, uh, no matter those who are threatened, they must know that it is not business as usual. And those who are money back should look for something else to do with their money. Because if you are going to buy people, you, have, you, you, are, going, you are going to need, uh, you are, you, I'm not sure where you can get the money to buy everybody. And because of the knowledge, said my people are perished because they lack knowledge. The knowledge has come, about government shall be upon his shoulder. Government cannot be upon the shoulder of your father and you say governor, governance is not, is not. In this state, we made somebody a governor. The first thing he did was to remove signboard, signboard of churches. So now, if you remove signboard of churches, government has become almost like a market. 
Now, what we are saying is that if we have taken somebody among our DK and we make him a governor, would that one go, come to? If the person will call him and say, you are part of this church. How, where do you want sign board of church? The same man who removed sign board of church put his big board everywhere. So everywhere there is poster of church, oh, you are defacing the, the community. But the posters of political party is a, is a, is a beauty on the, on the community. So we, the church has moved from that end. We are somebody who sit down and write the result. The church has woken up. Okay. My, my own take is that those who have not got their PVC, those who have, have their PVC, should not sit down on election day. Okay. And with the kind of uh, uh, movement that people are making now, even the political old order, they know that the, 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 the lion that is sleeping inside the church has woken up and nobody will be playing nobody will play football on the express road on election day and nobody will feast all night nobody will feed drive fasting because we know that it is not the business of drive fasting when it is time Jeremiah 48 10 said woe unto them that do the work of the uh, word of God deceitfully that withdraw their sword from shedding blood the meaning of, of it is that there are times that we must carry our sword so nobody should withdraw his own sword. Our sword now is our PVC for okay. the church. Okay. All right. Uh, Reverend Segari, quickly, last take on. Yeah, sincerely speaking, um, Sonny, Nigeria democratically have not done so badly. Okay. I share the opinion. Maybe a topic for another day. Definitely. Um, arising from the fact that uh, U.S., the Americans, years of independence and other countries, for the years of democracy in Nigeria, I want to share the thought that we have done a little well. When you travel to um, Akwa Ibon State to you, I've been there several times before uh, early 90s, and then today I was growing up. If you have been to Lagos of late, if you have been to Bini, okay, you have been in Bini here, in Bini City here, as we have used to be the second west road among all other of that transmission is taking yes, place yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. And then arising from the educational sector as well. Of course, somebody will say education is dead in Nigeria, forgetting the eight months of ASU. Mm. Let's understand that the Americans, the UKs, the um, Europeans, the Canadians, yeah, they place demand on Nigeria medical doctors, mm. they place demand on Nigeria students. That okay. is to say that there's something in Nigeria that the world actually needs, okay. not just the brain draining. I to say that uh, democracy a little bit have strived in Nigeria, but that things have been done in the old way, and the people who have led us in the past, in the recent past have done things the same way in the circle. Yes, Ambassador so came, he did his So beat, we need to have a change. A change. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in this change, like you said, we should look out for people with good character, people Competence. with capacity, people with competence, and people policy. with good policies. And then we see it in some of these um, actors, okay. some of these candidates. Okay. We should look out for them irrespective of the political party they, they belong to and take a stand to vote for them. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I mean, uh, the, it's an ongoing issue that we will continue to uh, analyze and the build up to the 2023 election because we are all stakeholders. I mean, the media uh, plays such a pivotal role that is only called unparalleled as far as an electoral process is concerned. As far as we're concerned, we'll continue to provide a platform for views to be conversed and ventilated just to help you form your own opinion and take action. That's very key. Big thanks to Bishop Austin Ibasan, Reverend Segali, as well as Pastor Phil Aroja. Thank you, gentlemen, for Thank coming. You. Well, um, the erudite Neville Obagado will be here for just a few minutes to also uh, take this conversation further. We'll be back with you in, in a moment. My colleagues, uh, Favor and uh, Praise will be here on that one. Don't go away.